Hello everyone, how are you today? Good evening, how was um, how was today? How was the whole week? Let me get to know you. Let me know, let, just tell me where you're joining from. Let me get to know you, tell me where you're joining from. Hello everyone, it's really nice to meet you. Uh, Marcus is ready to receive, you have me. Wonderful, really nice, very nice to meet everyone. Hi Priscilla. Just, you can just tell me something about yourself. Tell me this is my name. This is where I'm joining from. You know, I'm joining from Abuja. You know, this is me. I'm a doctor. Tell me the impact of next level. You know, I join. I don't attend. Hello, Apostle Promise. All the way from California. It's nice to have you, Apostle. It's nice to have you, Apostle. The shirt is still a problem. It's still a prayer point for me. Yeah. Really nice to meet you, Maureen. Grocery from Omoli Phase 2, Bukola from Leki, Omolola from Ibadan, Lola from Aja. Um, this is something some from, from the US, Atinike from Moyo from England, and um, my name is Chiwe Johnny from Lagos. I'm a pharmacist Johnny from Texas. Nice, 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 nice. Thank you for laughing, that was a promise. Um, Aloha Pelumi from Aja. So, um, Vivian, the honey, not Vivian, I think that's Vivian, okay. All right. Um, from Abuja, from Ireland, from Miami, from Shin, Shinto, from Miami, Akosua, from Ghana. People from everywhere joining. Robo from Lekki. Really nice if you want your friends so like i said earlier this evening we're going to talk about how to hear the voice of god clearly so if this is a challenge i want to get your friends to join us and we can have a conversation from the word of god about how to hear the word of god from clearly my name is williams you have been such a blessing to me thank you thank you for being so encouraging to me i really appreciate that williams uh, my name is onida i'm watching from obawa that's really great um next level has been amazing thank you very much I hope if you have a testimony, you can send it to praise report at Harvesters NG. If you have a testimony, you can send it to praise report at Harvesters NG. All right, so we'll just we'll take one or two minutes and just um, welcome people, you know, from anywhere they are. And um, so one or two, so the question today is how to hear how to hear God's voice clearly. How to hear God's voice clearly. So I have my friends from Milaro. I have a lot of people that says from Laro. So someone that says Bams from London. It's really nice. Uh, my name is Chikoze. Your prayers have been a source of power to me. Thank you for that. I say, can I send my prayer request? You can. You can. It's prayer requests at Harvest's NG. That's all. I'm Gloria from Abuja. Gloria, how are you? You know. You say you dropped some instructor from singles. Yes, I will. Um, from This is Yomi from South Africa. I'm a civil engineer. It's nice. That's nice. Okay. Um, I want to drop the insurance for singles, but it's been a busy weekend for me. So because of our ongoing conference, so I've not been able to sit down to just do the recording. And, um, you know, I will do that. My name is Omoni, Omoni Care watching from Ikorodu. Hello. How are you? This is Kenny from San Francisco, California. Hi, Kenny. Thank you for joining. Okay. One of the instructions, let me just start with this. All of you that are single that, you know, I, I said, I have some guidance on the street of God for you. One of the things, um, my name is Faith. Is it please call my name? Hi, Faith. I'm calling your name. Yeah, one of the guidance that God gave me from for singles is this. Very, very strange guidance. One of the things, um, one of the things that God really, you know, um, put in my heart is this. All of you that are single that want to get into a relationship and you seem to have some kind of delay. One of the guidance I have to tell you is this, number one. I'll just mention two, but I'll do a proper video. And mention the rest um, from all the way from Cape Town Nikki thank you for joining you know this is what I want to mention right now the first one is this a lot of people that are dating or ought to be dating are becoming exhausted there's an exhaustion going on so as I was praying God says that they're already tired they're already their mind is drifting away they're not in the place of being hopeful that they can have a miracle they want a miracle but they are not hopeful they can have a miracle and if you want to get married in that situation you have to you know you have to really change that the reason why is this the expectation of the right church shall not be cut short you can be praying about something i know that the journey could be quite stressful i'm not disputing that 
but I'm only saying that you just have to you know push yourself over and above over and above the second thing is this one of the guidance I have is this all of you that want to be in a relationship go into the prayers and begin to thank God for everybody you dated and thank God for everyone you dated this is the most difficult thing someone says am I going to thank God for that idiot I dated that guy was really an idiot like there's no better off for him yes the word is a thank God for him why is that important as you begin to thank God for him one of the powerful principles and power you release is this that God saw into my future and this guy becomes a pathway to something bigger so when you leave that relationship you don't feel as if you lost something you feel as if God used him to teach me something when the brothers of Joseph saw Joseph to become a slave you know what Joseph said when he eventually saw him again he says what you thought for evil God turned around for good the reason why you're not able to thank God for that person you dated, either the male or the female you dated, was because you thought that you've not seen the good in it. You cannot see how God can turn it around for your good. And that place that you're still in the place of hurt, pain, or you're just, you know, you're just in the place of just deny and just shut it off. And God says, you have to acknowledge something, that I'm working, that I am working, I'm working, I'm working. So you're going to God and say, Father, I don't know how I got there. I don't know what it means. But I know that my life is not a mistake. Even though I dated and it looked like something I should have not done at a waste of time, I know that you are in the process and you will make it all work out for me. In doing that, you are exercising your faith. You are declaring in a clear way that victory is yours. And let me tell you what will happen. The only reason why you find pain extremely painful is this. Because you don't have perspective and purpose. The moment Joseph understood the purpose of his pain and sails into slavery, his pain, his pain dematerialized instantly. Why am I saying so? The moment you begin to understand that that guy you dated, that lady you dated, no matter how bad it was, it was a path to something big. The path will unfold. The path will unfold. Because you will say, God, you began to walk in me and you walk through me still. I'll give you more instructions in another video. All right, so this evening i just really want to focus i really want to focus this evening on um how to hear the voice of god so i thought i could cover the content of this teaching on just in about 30 minutes 20 minutes is gone but you know looking over and over it again it's just very difficult to cover you know what to cover what we want to teach in 30 minutes i'll teach some today I'll cover some. I'll give you the whole outline of what I want to teach. The first thing I want to talk about is this, which I'll talk about today. Why don't we hear the word of the voice of God? The second thing is this: How does God speak to you? How does someone says you say the Lord said, but how do you? It's not going on mixer live. Just only on Instagram. I'm sorry about that. I'm sure as we go on. Yes, thank you, Ben. I'm, I want to pin up that. Uh, okay. Thank you, Ben, for that. So how to hear the voice of God clearly, you know. So the second I want to talk about, how does God speak? How does God speak? The third thing I want to talk about, that how can I be sure? So if I hear the voice of God, how can I be sure that this is God? The fourth thing I want to talk about is, how can I improve my ability to hear the voice of God? And the, um, the other thing I want to talk about is this, prophecy, prophets, dreams, and interpretation. Because I always get all these messages that I had this dream, what should I do? I had that dream, what should I do? I'm going to be able to speak into it. And the next, last thing I want to talk about is that when God says something and not looking like that, what should I do? What should you do if you feel I hear the voice of God and same voice the other way? What should I do? So all of those things I'm going to cover in this in this teaching. Remember, I will just be able to cover a bit today and next week we can continue from this. So the first thing I want to do is to read a story to you in the book of First Samuel. So I'm talking about, you can see how to hear the voice of God very clearly in First Samuel. All right, the Bible says um, <clears throat> in First Samuel chapter three, the Bible says, and it came to pass in verse two. Someone can let me type it there. That when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to grow dim, that he could not sleep, and the air lamp of the Lord went out, and the ark of the Lord was there. That Samuel was laid to sleep. Verse four says, and the Lord called Daniel. Take note of that. The Lord called Daniel, and what did God said to Daniel, and he said, Here am I. And he ran to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And Eli said, I call thee not. And he says, 
go and lie down again and he went and lay down again and the lord yet called him and said samuel and the bible says samuel arose and ran to eli and said here am i for that this call me and he said i called you not go lie down again well if you know the story because the story runs down up to like verse 10 and 12 if you know the story god began to call daniel and samuel and god called him three times and every time he called him three times samuel went to what samuel went to eli and when he went to eli what eventually happened there you know eli you know um he went to eli and eli said i'm sorry i didn't call you and he said but i thought i heard something so he went back again it was the third time that eli just came into a spiritual moment and he discovered and said oh my god that's actually the voice of god you're hearing the next time the voice speaks to you just sit back and say speak lord your servant listeneth and that's exactly what happened so he said speak lord your servant listeneth because i know a lot of you are trying to make a marital decision and you're wondering that where is god leading me you're trying to make a immigration decision say where is god leading me you're wondering i thought god said this to me but this other thing happened some of you are heartbroken because some people have used prophecy to kind of destroy the family and tear the family apart and you're wondering okay what what can i do some people just like you know the way it is i can't hear god we're going to all sort and clear all of that out today after the teaching today this is something that will happen to you you will be able to after this series of teaching rather maybe not just today you will be able to discern clearly how god is speaking to you thank you only food for sharing with your friends you can also get your friends attention and share this with them how god speaks to you so the first thing is this this is the first thing i want to establish it is possible for God to speak to you and you are not aware that God is speaking to you. And we've seen the story of Samuel because God was calling to you. Do you understand something? The moment Samuel was reaching out for Eli, God could have just said, hey, 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 Samuel, I'm the one else I calling you. God did not stop him. And that's because of a very important principle I'm going to share just now. Because that's why God did not interrupt him in his discussion in his discussion at that moment god just allowed him go god just allowed him go he didn't he didn't even say anything to him at all you know so the question now is there so it's possible so when you say i want god to speak to me maybe the question i want to be saying is that i want to hear the voice of god maybe god is speaking to you and you're not hearing let me give you three other instances in the bible where god is speaking and people were not hearing the bible says that a voice came from heaven when just I was say speaking and it said this is my beloved son you know um it said this is my beloved son and when the voice came the bible says that the people that around said a thunderet oh my god god was speaking clear instructions what they had in their ear was thundering because i'm only saying that sometimes when people are not well taught people are saying lord please speak to me lord please speak to me lord please speak to me but when you really read in the bible the way it seems in the Bible is that God is really speaking and people are not really just able to hear what God is saying. And the example I'll give you is this. It's a story in the Bible of Balaam and Balak. And Balaam and Balak, the Bible says was going, the prophet was going. An angel was there with a sword. And the angel was there with a sword. The animal could actually see the angel. The animal could actually perceive the angel. But the prophet, because of, for some reason... He could not perceive the angel and God was reaching out to him. It took the animal to say, hey, 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 God is trying to reach out to you. So let's go back to the first question. So this is the first thing. Um, why? Which is the first question? Why don't we hear the voice of God? Number one, because most of us have not been trained to hear the voice of God. Let me give you a practical illustration. Do you know that when you were younger, you couldn't decipher which was your father's voice, your mother's voice, your sister's voice, all the voices sounded alike to you. But as you grew older, you began to pick each voice in a very distinct way. For you to know the voice of God, you have to be trained to hear the voice of God. This is how the Bible says in the book of Hebrews. The Bible says that the mature believers are those that exercise the spiritual senses. So they are spiritual senses. And I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the, the dimensions of spiritual senses. They are spiritual senses. It says they are spiritual, they are spiritual senses. 
They ask for the true senses. So some people don't hear the voice of God because they've not been trained to do that. And if you've not been trained to hear the voice of God, it's good because in this teaching, if you can do it this week, next week, we won't be able to do, you know, just deal with that. The second thing is that why some don't hear the voice of God is this. Because they really think, this is what they really think. They really think that God cannot speak to them. You know, this is what they think. They say, that. <laughs> they say hey, Pastor Bay, if you know me, like if you know how terrible a person I am, I'm born again, but my born again is like half, half, 50, 50. You know, if you know the kind of terrible person I am, God can never speak to me. And let me tell you something. That's not true. Because God does not speak to you because you're perfect. This is what the Bible says in the book of John. He says, my sheep hear my voice and they know it. He says, my sheep hear my voice and they know it. If you are a child of God, if you are a child, it says, one, it says, my sheep hear my voice and they know it. That means that your ability to hear the voice of God is not because you're perfect. Your ability to hear the voice of God is because you're a child of God. As a matter of fact, Romans 8 says this. It says, as, it, um, it says, as many as are led of the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. As many as are led. So, so what does that mean? If I am led of the Spirit, I am the Son of God. In other words, if I am the Son of God, I am led of the Spirit. Boom. Then people say things like, um, you know, I used to hear the voice of God and God stopped speaking to me. You know, that, that's one that confuses me a lot. People say, see, let me tell you, if you listen to my teaching, it's, it's life-changing because I teach the Bible. I don't teach religion. I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't know how to teach religion. People say, God stopped speaking to me because I sinned, because I did this and did wrong. Almost like sin was so powerful, sin cut me off from God. That is not scriptural. I'm going to prove it to you in a second. Number one, when Adam and Eve sinned, who showed up next? It was God. It was God. God showed up to Adam and sin. When they, they didn't just sin normal sin, they sinned the ultimate sin and began to talk to them. I thought they said, when you sin, that God will just stop talking to you. That's not the Bible. When you sin, why should God show you when you sin? I thought that was the time you needed some help the most. Look to the, look, look to the Bible. Even when Peter denied Jesus Christ three times, the Bible said the third time, Jesus Christ looked towards Peter. That was not the time to ignore him. And let me say something to you. So someone says, oh, the reason I didn't hear the voice of God because I sinned. But look at the Bible. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve sinned. God spoke to them. Cain killed Abel. What happened? God went after Cain. God went after Cain. It's amazing. Because we have all this spiritual religious junk in our system. But we, and this is the reason, because this is the reason, right believing equals to right thinking, right thinking equals to right result. So if you begin to think that the reason why I can't hear God about my business, I can hear God about my marriage, I can't hear God about this, about that, is because I've sinned, then it's that thought or mental process is going to begin to hinder you from hearing God. But that's what I call in my language spiritual garbage. It's spiritual garbage. It could have been taught for a long time, but it's not consistent with scriptures. Look at David. Every time David sinned, God will speak to David or send him a prophet. Every time David sinned, God will speak to David or send him a prophet. So says, but there are people that God did not speak to. You need to find out something. Most of the time, when they're not hearing from God because there's a pending instruction they're not following, and God is saying, when you're done with that, come for more. So that's the first thing. So people don't hear from God because, you know, there's that thing that says that, you know, um, um, God speaks to me when I'm perfect. Listen to me. If God speaks to me when I'm perfect, what's the use of hearing God? Because I need God when I'm imperfect, when I'm lost. And because I'm human, most of the time I will be imperfect. The reason why I need guidance is because God knows I will be lost without one. Why does he withdraw guidance from me when he knows I'm lost? That doesn't make sense at all. That doesn't make sense at all. So the first reason why people don't hear God is this. Because of all this negative thinking. Let me give, let me give you another thing that people say. People say that, you know, um, you see, if people say that your sin doesn't allow you, your sin doesn't allow God to talk to you. The question is this. Do you know that God talks to sinners? Boom. Oh my God. 
Because this is this is funny because people say God talks to sin and some of you have boyfriends, girlfriends, parents, bosses that are not even close to being born again and they hear God real. Now, I know that I'm busting your bubbles. I'm, I know that I'm saying things you're not familiar with. But let us check from the Bible if God talks to Sina. Let's go. Number one. Who should Pharaoh the dream that there will be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine? Was he God or Satan? God. Question. Was Pharaoh born again? No. God want Abimelech that he should not touch the wife of Sarah. Question. Was Abimelech born again? No. As a matter of fact, Abraham said that they were actually a bunch of sinners. You know, the Bible is full of stories. When, when Nebuchadnezzar had the judgment and it wrote, shake out, shake out, take out, man, was he born again? No. God spoke to him. So, why do you think? Because religion says that once you're not born again, you're a Christian, God can talk to you. Listen to me. God loves people. As much as you can allow God to talk to you, he will talk to you. The problem is this. There's a problem when a Christian hears God. There's a problem. When the, when the non-Christian hears God, because he doesn't have spiritual senses, he's not able because it's like analog and digital. So, have you tried to use a digital device and an analog machine before? It's going to kind of downgrade if it's compatible. So the same thing, because the, the unbeliever is in the flesh, like spiritually dead, when God sends his spiritual signals, he can pick spiritual signals, but he cannot use it to the, to the full advantage. And that's why you notice something. Every time God shows unbelievers a dream, they will need someone that is spiritual to interpret the dream to them because that's how far they can go. It's, it's not because God is not telling them a lot of things, but their capacity to receive has been limited. Let me give one more example about how God speaks to people that, people that are not Christian. So the Bible says that when Jesus was born, that the wise men came to look for Jesus. You know, in the, you know, some Bible story says, some people think that there are three wise men. That's all wrong. The Bible never said how many wise men they were. As a matter of fact, some historians said they could be up to 1,000. But the second thing I wanted to show you is this. When the Bible says wise men, hope you know that they were not like intelligent people. No. They were like magicians, that people like they were like stargazers, people that read the stars. Those were very close to people that did magic. They, they were people that watch that watch all those kind of things. Those were wise men. So they were not godly people at all. But guess what? Even though they were not godly, God let them. 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 They missed it some other way. God let them. Thank you, Apostle. You know, that's a good example. Do you know when God spoke to Abraham about himself, that Abraham himself was an idol worshipper? When Abraham is in original country, was an idol worshipper. The reason I'm saying so is this. Most of them, when people don't hear God, this is why people don't hear God. We put all of this mental, this mindset blocks in the mind. And because it's in your mind, it begins, because your mind is a gateway to your spirit. You need to remember that. Your mind is a gateway to your spirit. So, whatever your mind cannot process, it will be difficult for your spirit to manifest it because your mind is the gateway to your spirit. So, God talks to sinners. God talks to us when we sin. God talks to us when we don't sin. God talks to us all the time. I want, any, anything you're doing, can you say when me, say, God talks to me all the time. Say, say, God talks to me all the time. Say, say, God talks to me all the time. And maybe this is a good place. This is a good place. I want you to say the scripture with me, which is in John chapter 15. And, and I hope this is very rich for you. If you have a question, I will be able to take some questions. Please don't post a question right now. I'm able to pay attention to what goes on the, on the screen. You know, I'm able to pay attention to what goes on on the screen. So don't, don't post any question right now. When it's time to post questions, all you can do right now is to, you know, you can just say something encouraging, you know, yeah. Um, I mean, someone said, how do I break the mindset? I'm trying to help you. Just by, listen, the way you formed the mindset was by hearing stuff that were, that were not consistent with God's word. The way you break the mindset is by saying the same thing. You know, it's by saying the same thing, by hearing the things, you know, yeah, by, by doing that, yeah. Okay, let's go into the word. What, let me read something to you. All right. Oh, this is so powerful. John chapter 10, verse 16. If you can post it for me, I'll be glad if you can post it for me. You're right, right there. See what the Bible says. This is the word of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, And all the sheep I have, which are not of this fold, 
them also must I bring and they shall hear my voice. Meaning this, once they become sheep, they hear my voice and shall be of one fold and one shepherd. Let's move to verse 20, um, verse, verse 27. John 10, 27 right now. He says, he says this, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. He says, my sheep hear my voice. Question, this is John 10, 27. Are you the sheep of God? I am the sheep of God. It says what the sheep does. This is what the sheep has. It says, my sheep hear my voice. So this is it. I'm the sheep of God. I hear the voice of God. I'm the sheep of God. I hear the voice of God. I'm the sheep of God. And listen, so this is how it works. I am the sheep of God. I hear the voice of God. So what is your first step in hearing the voice of God? The first step in hearing the voice of God is believing that you have an inherent capacity as a child of God to hear the voice of God. The same way a seam has an inherent capacity to receive and to dial out phone calls. As a child of God, I have an inherent capacity to what? To hear, to know the voice of God. God does not confuse me. I am the sheep of God. I hear the voice of God. If you think this is wrong, you have to compete with the word of Jesus. It's very simple. I am the sheep. Jesus said in verse 27, it says, my sheep hear my voice. It says, my sheep hear my voice. It says, they hear it. So, you see, the problem is not God speaking. The problem is we hearing. He says, my sheep hear my voice and they know it. Oh my God, this is so powerful. It says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. And they follow me. Another, you know, if you go further down, you know what it says? It says, the voice of a stranger, they will not respond to. It says, the voice of a stranger, they will not respond to. Very, very powerful. It says, the voice of the stranger, they will not respond to. Is it my shit? Hear my voice. So someone says, you know, how do you know the voice? How do you know? See, listen to me. I don't respond to the voice of strangers because I don't belong there. Listen to me. Let, let me give you a practical example. I'm going to use phone cards and most of you here may be from this part of the world some of you can be international so in nigeria we have two major um two major uh, um phone service provider there's mtn which is popular in africa and there's what they call it um there's globalcom which is popular in, in just popular here also listen to me mtn doesn't receive globalcom signals because it's an mtn sim it's an abnormally for MTN to be receiving Globalcom signals. And just like it's an abnormality for Vodacom, Vodacom, Vodafone, to be receiving um, T-Mobile signal. It's an abnormality. What does that mean? If the signal in me is a signal of the Holy Spirit, I will not be hearing the voices of darkness. I will not, oh my God. Oh, this is powerful, hallelujah. Listen, oh my God. Listen, I, oh. I feel like blowing up the whole place right now. The word of God is just taking my mind, my spirit, my soul over. Someone says, I don't know, question. I, the, the same card in me is the same card of the Holy Spirit. I don't respond to satanic signals. I do not respond to satanic signals. The same way MTN doesn't respond to Vodacom signals, I don't respond to satanic signals. Someone says, okay, 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 calm down, pastor. But sometimes I, I hear some voices, like satanic voices in my head. And the reason is this. There's a reason why. Because that's what you believe. Because what it's going to be unto you as you believe. It's not as if you can hear a suggestion from Satan. But you will know that's not your signal. You know that's not your signal. Listen, if, 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 if your partner, your wife or your husband has a car... When they are at the gate, when they horn, the reason why their horn sounds, every other person can horn, but there's a way, there is a way your wife horns, there's a way your husband horns, there's a way, there's a way your dad horns, there's a way someone horns. For those of you, horn means, you know, um, that, that thing you press in the car, for those of you that don't know what the horn is. For example, also, there is a way your phone rings. That's why when every phone rings, except someone has your ringtone, you don't jump up and say, that's my phone. Because your ringtone is different. Listen, your ringtone is of the Holy Spirit. And other phones can be ringing around you, but it doesn't really jump at you because your ringtone is extremely, extremely different. This is so powerful. This is so powerful. This is so powerful. So the first reason why we don't hear the voice of God is this. Because number one, 
we've not been we've not been trained to so we're hearing the voice but like Samuel we can't just like pick it out and say this is the voice of God the second reason I don't hear the voice of God is this because we don't believe a lot of people don't believe because this was the thing the thing that for God to speak to me I'm gonna be in the most perfect situation can you be worse than Cain Cain literally killed his brother Abel Cain literally killed his brother Abel can you be worse than Cain and he, because some people say, if I sing, God will stop speaking to me. We need to throw the rubbish. That's really just garbage. Because Adam and Eve sinned, God spoke to them right after. Cain sinned, God spoke to him right after. David sinned, God spoke to him right after. Why do you get all this garbage from saying, this pastor said so? I respect the pastor that said so, but I have to place the word of God above the pastor that said so. This is really amazing. The third reason why people don't hear God is this. And when is it don't hear God? Listen to what I say. When they don't hear God is this. It's because they are already bent on what they want to do. So no matter what God says, it doesn't make... They can't really perceive what God says because they are already bent on what they want to do. Or, you know, they're already bent on what they want to do. So what comes to mind? That prophet, Balaam Balak. That prophet. The God was speaking so much to him, but he was so bent on on the money he couldn't hear the voice of god are you that kind of person you're so bent on marrying this person her name is shinene and you say lord could you please show me what your choice is you can fool god with your prayers god can see through you god can see through you you're so bent on migrating abroad. You're so bent on taking that pay. You're so bent on that. And you say, let me pray. Listen to me. Most times when people say, let me pray, they already know what they want. And listen, it's nice if God doesn't speak to you, but your mind is not able to receive it because there's all these distortions going on in your mind because you already know what to do. So, and this is what the Bible says. It's not, not, not my will, not yours be done. Like, Lord, this is what I like. But at the end of the day, I put it down. Not my will, not yours be done. I want to say to you today. Excuse me. I want to say to you today. And I'm going to close and ask for two or three questions that I can pray for some people. We will continue next week Saturday just 8 p.m. also so we can make it a date and if you have questions you can say that ahead of time you can tell people the videos will be stored up you know it's, it's short it's not like church so I can't make you sit down and just watch this all the time you know for all this while so this is what I want to say to you if you want to hear the voice of God be open to hearing the voice well the person you cannot fool is God God sees everything this is your thoughts your intellect your mind everything so it knows when you say, Lord, speak to me, and you want to hear, and when you say, Lord, speak to me, and it means nothing. And the reason why people don't hear the voice of God, just look at that prophet. An angel stood in front of him, but he was not willing to hear the voice of God. Because his mind was made up on what he wanted to do. When your mind is made up on what you want to do, it will be difficult to perceive what the voice of God is. It will be. Do you imagine throughout the whole time, when Judas was going to preach Jesus Christ, you mean there was no voice that said, Judas, what are you doing? But his mind was so made up, he couldn't really hear what God was saying to him. I believe tonight that people that, your mind is made up about something. You, maybe God wants to step into an, a, a something and he said, I don't want to step into it. Maybe you want to take an action and God said, don't do that, but you want to, you don't want to. Maybe you're in the wrong relationship, maybe you're in the wrong location, maybe you're in the wrong career. Maybe you're meant to do a business, but you want to say you're paid employment. Maybe you're meant to sow a seed, but you want to hold on to the money. Maybe you're meant to help a neighbor, but you don't want, you know, you, 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 know, you, you just don't want to, you don't want to do anything about it. There's nothing we can do for that. Just remember that the more you are not open towards God's voice, the more God cannot speak to you. So let's close tonight. Let's close tonight. Let's just wrap this up. And you can begin to share your questions right now. And if you want me to pray about something, I would also love to pray about you, with you about anything at all. So why doesn't God speak to people, number one? Because people are not trained to hear the voice of God. So when people want to hear the voice of God, what happens is this. They, you know, um, the voice is there, but they can't hear it. And we use the story of Samuel to substantiate that teaching that God was speaking to Samuel, but literally Samuel couldn't hear. 
The second reason why people don't hear the voice of God is very simple, is because it's because of their belief system. They don't really have faith that God can speak to them. They believe that God can speak to their prophet, their pastor, their teacher. But listen to me, you know, you know, they don't really have faith that God can speak to them. That's amazing. And, and the third reason why people don't hear the voice of God is simple. It's just very powerful. It's just because some people really think that um, my sin, and it's part of their beliefs in that my sin, God doesn't speak to sinners, my sin is holding me back, and all those things are junk. God speaks to you. God speaks to you. God speaks to you. And the last reason why people don't hear the voice of God is this, their mind is made up. Their mind is made up. Their mind is made up. So that, that, those, are, those are the questions I have. But yeah, those are some questions I have. Okay, so let's begin to take some questions right now. Do that, do that, do that, that's some of my teaching. So next week, we're going to go deeper. We're going to go deeper and begin to focus on how does God speak. So if someone is asking a question about intuition, all of those kind of things, please, you know, um, you know, all of you that know how to write notes, you can write those notes and get, send, it, send it to me on Instagram. I can post it. You know, um, intuition, I'll cover those in my subsequent teaching, so allow me not to answer those things right now. Um, someone says that, um, do you have a place we can give you South Africa? Yes, we do. We have a place you can give in South Africa. If you send me a message, we'll be able to tell you what you can do about the giving in South Africa. Okay, someone said, um, someone says this, um, sh but shouldn't we always have a plan? Yeah, it's not deliberate to have. Okay, good. Someone says, this is what the person is saying, which is very strategic. He said, um, if I need to hear the voice of God, don't I need to have a plan? So let me help you. The book of Proverbs answered this clearly. Proverbs says this, I think it's chapter four. It's a trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. This is what the voice of God does for you. The voice of God gives you direction. When you have direction, then you create your plan based on direction. The, even God, in some cases, God can give you a plan. But in most cases, what God does for you is to give you direction. I'll give an example. So God says that I want to move to Canada. But it's not going to give you the plan on submit your CV, do this, go and do the test. No, 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 no. The thing is this, the voice, the direction is the foundation. Every mom must have a plan. All right, I hope I've answered your question. Um, um, someone says save the video, the video will be saved. So the video will be saved and please, if it's saved, I want all to share with your friends and tell your friends to watch it. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just looking through it. This person says, um, um, God speaks in different ways, not share a loud voice. Of course, I'm going to explain different. I'm going to say, how does God speak? I'm going to speak about that later. There are different ways. God, God, there are, there are many manifestations of God's voices. You know, that kind of thing. How do I know when God is speaking or is telling myself? That's one of the things I'm going to share, how I can be shown God's voice. So maybe someone just has to be patient. So I said, can we listen to your message on podcast? Um, just give me about till March. You'll be able to get an aggregate of the messages on podcast. Um, I found the person sitting in my... I found the person sitting on my progress. Can you... Help me, please. I really don't know what to do about that. Please post how we can show through the Access Bank platform. Um, I'm not sure if you can send me a message. I can do that. Um, someone said, can you kind of remind you I don't use credit card? I don't know what you're talking about. If the South African giving, if anything about giving, just inbox me and I can take it from there. I can ask our finance to just talk to you. I want to focus this majorly about the program. So you can inbox me about that just after now, you know. How do you differentiate between the voice of God and the voice in your head? I'll take that next teaching. If I have my plans, can I lay them before the Lord and pray about it? That's what I've said. I said, God will not necessarily give you a plan. He'll give you direction. Your plans should be based on God's direction. Your plan should be based on God's direction. How can I be trained to hear the voice of God? By listening to this stuff, by being here next Saturday. That's how you, you get it. I've been praying to get married for 15 years now, and my prayer is not answered. Well, um, let me speak to you in your two. I, I'm very passionate about things like this just because you said your prayer is not answered it's the reason why it's not answered I'm, I'm I'm so serious if you think God does not answer your prayer why do you pray that, that means in reality you know the, the the what do you call it your faith you just pray religiously let me say something to you. Have you tried to call a number before that you know exists and is not working and is not on? You don't stop. You keep calling the number because you know the number works. So just the way you've thrown in the towel and I'm like, um, God doesn't answer my prayers because it's already a mindset. You know, if it's not a mindset, this is the way I think you're going to ask. I'm praying. I'm praying a lot. 
and I'm wondering what can I do to get my prayer answered. You're looking for a way out, but you've come to a conclusion that God does not answer my prayer. And if you feel that way, you know, you have to take that up with God. So once have you got a branch in London, we have a small group in London. If you want to be part of it, for that London, send me at meet online for now. We'll, we'll let you know. Pastor, pray for my relationships. Okay, pray for this. All right. All right. Okay, I, I've gotten, uh, my plan is based on God's direction, but I can have a goal to ask, but I can have a goal. To, I'm sorry, I don't understand that. Um, my friend is having delay in marriage, right off of him, who I've been praying for her, but no response. I think she should get on it herself. And, um, you know, you're going to carry, she's going to carry the other part kind also. The way she's going to carry the other part kind also. So if she wants, let her do the next level prayer and pray. And, and let me say something. During the next level prayer this week, you know, during the next level prayer this week, the first on Monday, one of one of the key things we're saying, all of the asking questions about South Africa, just DM me. And we can give you to about church, all those kind of things. We just have a cell in South Africa right now. You know, one of the things, um, all of it that, um, what they call it, um, you're praying for your friend. She has carried. So I was saying about next level. This week, Monday until the next level, we are particularly praying for direction. Is there a group in the US? A group is in formation right now. It will be it will be full form by March, April. So you can send me your DM and we can add it to you. So one of the things you want to do, one of the things you really want to do is this. This is what you want to do. Um, Monday and Tuesday, you want to separate those times. You want to separate those times. So Monday is like, Lord, direct my steps, direct my career and business steps. That's the Monday focus of prayer. It's the Monday focus of prayer. Direct my career and business steps. The next day, it's like, Lord, show me the way out. Anywhere you are in, Lord, show me the way out. Lord, show me the way out. Lord, show me the way out. That's what it is, you know. So, 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 so that, so, so, so that, so Monday. This is powerful. And I want to encourage you. You can form a community of people. All of it that you know. Um, surely, surely, can we start a community here in Canada? You can. Um, adorable. You can. I think some people have started. You can also start one. But if you want to join, want to start it, inbox me. I will tell you what how to join. How to join that. Amen. I want us to begin to pray. I want us to begin to pray. Yes. So if you're in the Canada group, you can just begin to link up with each other. You can pick up each other and just come together and we can create something. You know, I want us to begin to pray. Hallelujah. Can we believe God for miracles today? Can we believe God for answer prayers? Can we believe God for things? People are saying needs over there. And let me tell you something. You know, I posted the testimony of today. A child, I think it was from Canada, actually. Um, they, they had a problem. I'm not sure if it's from Canada, but there are two testimonies like that. This child... They had a problem, had a problem talking and he couldn't talk. And because he couldn't talk, it was really bad. And as we prayed, God restored it. And you know what I told someone? I said, how much faith does a child that is four years old have? Does a child that is four years old have a lot of faith? I don't think he has a lot of faith. I think a child that is four years old, what he really has is this. He just believes. Just believe like a child. Bible says, just believe like a child for a miracle. Just believe like a child for a miracle. Hallelujah. Um, you, you know, I had a testimony of someone that had payment for four years released as we prayed. Four years payment. This were tens of millions released as we prayed. Jobs, you know, released as we prayed. Let's go ahead and pray. If, if you can pray in the Holy Spirit, someone said, I want to pray in the Holy Spirit. I will tell you that they will pray for those of the Holy Spirit. I know I've said it before, but sometimes just to meet up with these things could be us be a lot of time. You know, I'll get to, I'll pray in the Holy Spirit. So let's go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Lord, I pray for everyone participating in this right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I commend every trace of sickness to leave your body. I command every form of delay, financial delay, marital delay, career delay to go. I pray for everyone that needs a baby. The conceptive power of God comes upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, there's a lady that is watching right now. And at times you feel something press on your chest in the night. It's an oppression of the devil. I command it to go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I command it to go. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Let that payment come through for you in Jesus' mighty name we pray. I pray for people that are watching from different parts of the world. I'm praying that just like Joseph was established in a strange country, God will establish wherever you are. In the US, in the UK, in South Africa, in Zimbabwe, God will establish it wherever you are. In the name of Jesus Christ, step into supernatural victory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Receive your marital settlement in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you want to help us spread the word about Next Level Press, about the teaching in your country, in your state, maybe in Abuja, in Port Harcourt, wherever you are, send me a DM. I would love to speak to you personally. Thank you. Tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be really good. We're having a great service online. You can just online on, on time. If you want to, you know, and some of you say I want to talk to me, we'll release the opportunity to talk because a lot of demand to talk. And the last thing is this. Um, um, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, was pray for direction. I want to trust God that in case you just step out of his way, in case you're in the wrong place, that God will direct your steps. And this is what I want to do. Every one of you, get 10 persons to invite among your friends. We're going to come together and believe God for a miracle, for direction. Thank you. I love you so much, everyone. The reason why I do this is this. I love Jesus. I love him so much. But I also want people to know Jesus the way I know him. I want people to live for him and experience the goodness of God. And thank you for joining. Thank you. Love you. Good night.